May 4. Duties of the Gatekeepers These are the divisions of the gatekeepers. From the Korahites, there was Meshelamiah, son of Kor, of the family of Abiasaph. The sons of Meshelamiah were Zechariah the oldest, Jediel the second, Zebediah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, and Elioenai the seventh. The sons of Obed-Edom, also gatekeepers, were Shemaiah the oldest, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, Sechor the fourth, Nethanel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, and Peulathai the eighth. God had richly blessed Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom's son Shimea had sons with great ability who earned positions of great authority in the clan. Their names were Othni, Raphael, Obed, and Elzabad. Their relatives Elihu and Semachiah were also very capable men. All of these descendants of Obed-Edom, including their sons and grandsons, 62 of them in all, were very capable men, well qualified for their work. Meshelamiah's 18 sons and relatives were also very capable men. Hosa of the Mirari clan appointed Shimri as the leader among his sons, though he was not the oldest. His other sons included Hilkiah the second, Tebaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth. Hosa's sons and relatives, who served as gatekeepers, numbered thirteen in all. These divisions of the gatekeepers were named for their family leaders, and like the other Levites, they served at the house of the Lord. They were assigned by families for guard duty at the various gates, without regard to age or training, for it was all decided by means of sacred lots. The responsibility for the east gate went to Meshelamiah and his group. The north gate was assigned to his son Zechariah, a man of unusual wisdom. The south gate went to Obed-Edom, and his sons were put in charge of the storehouse. Shuppam and Hosa were assigned the west gate and the gateway leading up to the temple. Guard duties were divided evenly. Six Levites were assigned each day to the east gate, four to the north gate, four to the south gate, and two pairs at the storehouse. Six were assigned each day to the west gate, four to the gateway leading up to the temple, and two to the courtyard. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers from the clans of Korah and Mirari. Treasurers and Other Officials Other Levites, led by Ahijah, were in charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries of the gifts dedicated to the Lord. From the family of Libni in the clan of Gershon, Jehiel was the leader. The sons of Jehiel, Zetham, and his brother Joel were in charge of the treasuries of the house of the Lord. These are the leaders that descended from Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. From the clan of Amram, Shubal was a descendant of Gershom, son of Moses. He was the chief officer of the treasuries. His relatives through Eliezer were Rehabiah, Jesheah, Joram, Zikri, and Shelamoth. Shelamoth and his relatives were in charge of the treasuries containing the gifts that King David, the family leaders, and the generals and captains and other officers of the army had dedicated to the Lord. These men dedicated some of the plunder they had gained in battle to maintain the house of the Lord. Shelamoth and his relatives also cared for the gifts dedicated to the Lord by Samuel the seer, Saul, son of Kish, Abner, son of Ner, and Joab, son of Zuriah. All the other dedicated gifts were in their care, too. From the clan of Izhar came Kenaniah. He and his sons were given administrative responsibilities over Israel as officials and judges. From the clan of Hebron came Hashabiah. He and his relatives, 1,700 capable men, were put in charge of the Israelite lands west of the Jordan River. They were responsible for all matters related to the things of the Lord and the service of the king in that area. Also from the clan of Hebron came Jeriah, who was the leader of the Hebronites according to the genealogical records. In the fortieth year of David's reign, a search was made in the records, and capable men from the clan of Hebron were found at Jazer in the land of Gilead. There were 2,700 capable men among the relatives of Jeriah. King David sent them to the east side of the Jordan River and put them in charge of the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were responsible for all matters related to God and to the king. Military Commanders and Divisions This is the list of Israelite generals and captains and their officers who served the king by supervising the army divisions that were on duty each month of the year. Each division served for one month and had 24,000 troops. 
Joshabim, son of Zabdiel, was commander of the 1st Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the first month. He was a descendant of Piraz and was in charge of all the army officers for the first month. Dodai, a descendant of Ahoa, was commander of the 2nd Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the second month. Mikloth was his chief officer. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada the priest, was commander of the 3rd Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the third month. This was the Benaiah who commanded David's elite military group known as the 30. His son Amizabad was his chief officer. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was commander of the 4th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the fourth month. Asahel was succeeded by his son Zebediah. Shammah the Israelite was commander of the 5th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the fifth month. Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, was commander of the 6th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the sixth month. Helaz, a descendant of Ephraim from Pelan, was commander of the 7th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the seventh month. Sebekiah, a descendant of Zerah from Husha, was commander of the 8th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 8th month. Abizer from Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin was commander of the 9th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 9th month. Maharai, a descendant of Zerah from Natofa, was commander of the 10th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 10th month. Benaiah from Pirathon in Ephraim was commander of the 11th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 11th month. Helid, a descendant of Othniel from Natofa, was commander of the 12th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 12th month. Leaders of the Tribes The following were the tribes of Israel and their leaders. Reuben, Elizar, son of Zikri. Simeon, Shephatiah, son of Meekah. Levi, Hashabiah, son of Kemuel. Aaron the priests, Zadok. Judah, Elihu, a brother of David. Issachar, Amri, son of Michael. Zebulun, Ishmaiah, son of Obadiah. Naphtali, Jeremoth, son of Azrael. Ephraim, Hoshea, son of Azaziah. Manasseh, west. Joel, son of Padeah. Manasseh in Gilead, East, Ido, son of Zechariah. Benjamin, Jaziel, son of Abner. Dan, Azarel, son of Jeroham. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. When David took his census, he did not count those who were younger than twenty years of age, because the Lord had promised to make the Israelites as numerous as the stars in heaven. Joab, son of Zuriah, began the census but never finished it, because the anger of God fell on Israel. The total number was never recorded in King David's official records. Officials of David's Kingdom Asmaveth, son of Adil, was in charge of the palace treasuries. Jonathan, son of Uzziah, was in charge of the regional treasuries throughout the towns, villages, and fortresses of Israel. Ezri, son of Kelub, was in charge of the field workers who farmed the king's lands. Shimei, from Ramah, was in charge of the king's vineyards. Zabdi from Shephem was responsible for the grapes and the supplies of wine. Baalhanan from Geder was in charge of the king's olive groves and sycamore fig trees in the foothills of Judah. Joash was responsible for the supplies of olive oil. Shitrei from Sharon was in charge of the cattle on the Sharon plain. Shaphat, son of Adli, was responsible for the cattle in the valleys. Obel the Ishmaelite was in charge of the camels. Jediah from Meranoth was in charge of the donkeys. Jazes the Hagrite was in charge of the king's flocks of sheep and goats. All these officials were overseers of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a wise counselor to the king, a man of great insight and a scribe. Jehiel the Hakmonite was responsible for teaching the king's sons. Ahithophel was the royal advisor. Hushai the Archite was the king's friend. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, son of Benaiah, and by Abiathar. Joab was commander of the king's army. David's Instructions to Solomon 
David summoned all the officials of Israel to Jerusalem, the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of the army divisions, the other generals and captains, the overseers of the royal property and livestock, the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the other brave warriors in the kingdom. David rose to his feet and said, My brothers and my people, it was my desire to build the temple where the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, God's footstool, could rest permanently. I made the necessary preparations for building it, but God said to me, You must not build the temple to honor my name, for you are a warrior and have shed much blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, has chosen me from among all my father's family to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen the tribe of Judah to rule, and from among the families of Judah He chose my father's family. And from among my father's sons, the Lord was pleased to make me king over all Israel. And from among my sons, for the Lord has given me many, he chose Solomon to succeed me on the throne of Israel and to rule over the Lord's kingdom. He said to me, Your son Solomon will build my temple and its courtyards, for I have chosen him as my son, and I will be his father. And if he continues to obey my commands and regulations, as he does now, I will make his kingdom last forever. So now, with God as our witness, and in the sight of all Israel, the Lord's assembly, I give you this charge. Be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God, so that you may continue to possess this good land and leave it to your children as a permanent inheritance. And Solomon, my son, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind, for the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So take this seriously. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple as his sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. Then David gave Solomon the plans for the temple and its surroundings, including the entry room, the storerooms, the upstairs rooms, the inner rooms, and the inner sanctuary, which was the place of atonement. David also gave Solomon all the plans he had in mind for the courtyards of the Lord's temple, the outside rooms, the treasuries, and the rooms for the gifts dedicated to the Lord. The king also gave Solomon the instructions concerning the work of the various divisions of priests and Levites in the temple of the Lord. And he gave specifications for the items in the temple that were to be used for worship. David gave instructions regarding how much gold and silver should be used to make the items needed for service. He told Solomon the amount of gold needed for the gold lampstands and lamps, and the amount of silver for the silver lampstands and lamps, depending on how each would be used. He designated the amount of gold for the table on which the bread of the presence would be placed, and the amount of silver for other tables. David also designated the amount of gold for the solid gold meat hooks used to handle the sacrificial meat and for the basins, pitchers, and dishes, as well as the amount of silver for every dish. He designated the amount of refined gold for the altar of incense. Finally, he gave him a plan for the Lord's chariot, the gold cherubim whose wings were stretched out over the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. Every part of this plan, David told Solomon, was given to me in writing from the hand of the Lord. Then David continued, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. He will see to it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. The various divisions of priests and Levites will serve in the temple of God. Others with skills of every kind will volunteer, and the officials and the entire nation are at your command.